My name is John Sloboda. I'm a research psychologist. Every year, hundreds of thousands of people in all professions and all walks of life attend international conferences. This often entails flying across oceans and continents to meet together in one place. I'm one of those people. As a university researcher, exchanging findings and ideas with other scholars around the world is the lifeblood of my professional life. I go to at least one such conference every year, and I couldn't imagine how I would be an effective member of my profession without it. But there is a big downside to these conferences. First, they're pretty expensive. People on a limited budget are often excluded. Second, they add hugely to the world's burden of carbon, contributing to global warming through the millions of air miles used every year to jet people to these conferences. Until recently, I thought that there was no effective way to address these concerns without giving up going to international conferences, or at the very least, drastically reducing my attendance. But in 2018, I attended a conference that was designed to tackle these problems head on. The conference was organised by Professor Richard Pankat, a musicologist, psychologist and environmental activist working at the University of Graz in Austria. Here is Richard Pankat explaining his ideas at a meeting held a few months in advance of the conference. So what we're planning for July is to have four hubs. Uh, Graz is one of four hubs which are nominally equal for the purpose of programming and content. We are planning to communicate in real time uh, during this conference, which means that, for example, if it's morning in Graz, then we can communicate in real time with Sydney, where it will be the evening. And if it's the morning in Sydney, they can communicate in real time with La Plata or Montreal, where it's the evening and so on. So the aim of this conference is the same as any other academic conference. First of all, we want to promote high quality research in our discipline. And we also want people to have a good time talking to each other and communicating in a, in a relaxing and fun way so that they can uh, be more creative. Because as we all know, this is what happens when you go to a conference. You, you enjoy talking to people who have similar interests and you create ideas in this way. And so somehow we have to try to maintain that while at the same time achieving a whole series of other goals. And the first one is that we would like to avoid harming other human beings, which is the, the climate aspect, which we'll go into in detail. Um, but at the same time, we can also make the conference more global because in the past, um, this conference has had two thirds participants from the same continent, simply because it's too expensive to fly from another one. Um, we can also make it easier for people to participate regardless of their financial background or their mobility. Um, we can also increase the cultural diversity of the participants. Um, we can improve the dissemination of the findings by using electronic media, uh, putting live streams and videos in the internet, and we would like to halve the emissions per person of a typical conference. Um, so taking into account all of the aspects of a conference which could cause emissions. Those were the intentions. How did participants actually experience the new format? The conference took place at the end of July 2018 and over the course of the conference we asked people at the different hubs to give us their impressions and opinions on camera. Give us some of your impressions about this new multi-hub format. Well, uh, so far I think it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, uh, we are not there yet, but we are almost there in terms of the simultaneous uh, conferencing, right? Uh, I like the fact that we can uh, expand the scope, the cultural scope mostly uh, of the conference. I mean, we have three hubs uh, uh, and in three continents. I mean, we have South America, you have North America, you have Europe at the same time. So the cultural input is, uh, is valuable and uh, the ecological print, footprint of that is also uh, a plus. Yeah, in general, um, people will have to take planes less often and uh, we have to get less far and also uh, people with less budget uh, can, can participate more easily so I really applaud that, I like that. The only uh, thing that I might criticize is actually the fact that when I go to a conference uh, 
I go to meet people, to network, uh, to talk to people. Um, so actually, if everybody would be in, in separate small hubs, I would be a little bit afraid that you lose this contact, the direct uh, contact with fellow researchers. Um, I like the fact that we're recording the talks and keeping them online for a while because there are talks that I'm going to miss either because I was presenting or because they happen after I leave and I can go online and find those talks and listen to them and I think that's really valuable. The experiences of actually um, talking to people face to face after sessions um, about their work or my work or collaborating has been one of the more positive things which, which has been somewhat reduced by the format but I'm still able to do it because I travel. So initially when I looked at the schedule I just thought this is just too, uh, there's just too much information here I really can't face even looking at how I'm going to decide what to go to and uh, then I got the schedule and actually it's really not so complicated and uh, I was initially quite skeptical about it but I have to say it is, it is so, there's something very exciting about having someone from Australia comment on your session in real time. I think that the thing that you miss about the hub format is you actually miss meeting people, having a personal connection at times, talking in over coffee. From what I understand you have these rooms where people can drop into to chat but I, I don't think that just seems a bit too much like cold calling. So, uh, or maybe I haven't understood it correctly, but I haven't really felt tempted to do that. I think it's a very interesting format of conference because for the past few years I've been to some conference, big conference that we have a lot of um, chance talking face to face with each other. But for this time, I feel that this is a really, really small world that we can talk to people in La Prata, in Montreal in real time without any barriers. So uh, I feel like um, we got more chance to um, talk to people in Sydney Hub as well because we have um, not a very big group and we can um, yeah, spend more time with each other and talk more in, in a deeper way. I like the International Hub Conference format for its ability to allow us to travel less and not as far with the amount of time, but I do miss the opportunity to get together with colleagues who are further away. My suggestion or desire would to be to have maybe a fourth hub somewhere that matches up with an Australian timeline so that we could have more interaction of time where we're not sleeping from one side and waking on the other. There is the disadvantage of not being able to catch up with the colleagues and uh, collaborators and friends that uh, you make over the years. That said, there is also the added advantage of having the increased intimacy among the group here, and so you get to develop some of those relationships locally a bit more. So that was an unanticipated advantage of this approach. breaks down the, the, the barriers of, uh, I mean, economic and, and traveling barriers that uh, make conference al always constrain or restrain to a, a few people who can afford to travel far. Of course, it hasn't been perfect. Like, for example, here in La Plata, we had very little opportunities, very few opportunities to see the talks from Sydney. But uh, of course, that's that's only understandable. They they're almost the other way around in the world. I think that the bit where that hasn't worked um, optimally, optimally is the the global fire. So I think we still need to come up with a better option for informal interaction in this new format of conferences. Me parece una experiencia muy interesante. También bastante acorde a lo que puede llegar a ser el desarrollo profesional de los investigadores hoy, donde nos conectamos con otros investigadores del mundo a través de Skype o incluso viendo conferencias a través de YouTube. Eh, me parece que, digamos, resuena con lo que, con cómo venimos trabajando hoy en día los investigadores. Eh, así que me pareció que estuvo muy bien. Sí está la cuestión de que siempre me imagino que va a ser un problema el del lenguaje. Eh, en el cual coincidimos en el inglés como la lengua para divulgar nuestros trabajos, pero al momento de la discusión me parece que también este, propiciar un espacio de discusión local después de cada una de las charlas podría haber sido rico para eh, propiciar otro tipo de intercambio entre los que estábamos presentes. I guess if, uh, some kind of feedback 
this asks for. I, I would suggest to simplify a little bit the format of the uh, of the uh, uh, Congress in the sense that it's probably too much technical information given to participants, but but that's a minor, really very minor thing. As a whole, I think that the Congress has been fantastic, and I really hope it continues like this next time. Well, that's a sample of responses from people we were able to speak to during the conference. Summarising, they spontaneously identified seven major positive aspects of their experience. A general good feeling or vibe. It saved money for those on limited budgets. It reduced carbon footprint, less flying. As a consequence, it facilitated cultural diversity. Smaller hubs allowed for more intimate, intensive contact. Technology allowed real-time interaction with other hubs. Technology allowed viewing of talks you were not physically present for. People also identified some problems. There was a lack of face-to-face -face human contact with people in the other hubs. The attempt to remedy this through a global foyer didn't work well. There were time zone and language issues. And the overall complexity of the programme made it difficult to navigate. The interviews were an opportunity sample of people who happened to be around when we were filming. The organisers supplemented this with a more systematic investigation of outcomes using questionnaire and other data. Using data about the location from which the participants travelled and their stated mode of travel, the organisers were able to calculate the carbon savings compared to a hypothetical conference where the same delegates had all flown to one hub. This showed an average drop of 70% per person in carbon emissions. That's a serious and significant improvement. The multi-hub format also allowed 50% greater attendance than at the previous single hub conference in the series. Finally, in an anonymous survey, 61% of those participants who expressed a clear preference gave positive ratings to the new conference format, a clear majority. Not everyone liked it, but enough felt the advantages outweighed the disadvantages of not having everyone in one place. So it seems we have evidence that the multi-hub format meets key objectives for the environment and for greater accessibility. It could be much more widely adopted than it currently is. Perhaps you or your organisation would like to try it. But how would you go about it and what resources would you need? We asked Richard to talk us through issues of organisation, staffing, equipment and finance. The conference was distributed across four hubs, as you see on this map of the world. One of them was in Austria, one in Australia, one in Argentina and the other one in Canada. We managed to distribute the program across 24 hours, as you see in this table. Uh, the top line of the table is UTC, which is time relative to Great Britain in the winter. And on the second row of the table, you can see what happened in Montreal in the morning. Um, at 9 o'clock, which is 13 UTC, the morning session began. And at the same, we, same time, we had the afternoon session in Graz, beginning at 15, which is 3 p.m. And so you see we had a four-hour block where three different hubs were working at the same time. Uh, we didn't manage to get another four-hour block like this because there was a large time difference between Sydney and Montreal, but if there was one or two more hubs, we would have had no trouble making large blocks of common time. Now I can talk about a 30-minute time slot, which is a common way of dividing up the program at academic conferences. Often there are two-hour sessions which are divided into four different 30-minute slots. Um, so we divided them up in the usual way. We had 20 minutes of talking, followed by seven minutes of discussion, followed by three minutes for changing rooms. And during the presentation session, we used a certain software, we used a different software for the discussion. The software used in the presentation was YouTube Livestream, uh, which you can regard as a one-way software system in which a person is talking and the audience is listening, but the audience cannot talk back. Of course, during the discussion, the audience has to talk back, and this also happens to have, has to happen at two different hubs at the same time. So we use software called Zoom, which is similar to Skype. We could easily have used Skype as well, and we switched from one to the other at the end of the presentation. In fact, both of these softwares were running simultaneously, which avoided 
problems during the presentation. There were no technical problems at our conference because we always had both of these softwares running simultaneously in every room. For the uh, one-way communication, we also had to mix the talking head with the PowerPoint slide, as you can see right now while you're watching me, and we also had to mix the sound from the microphone with sound from the hard disk of the computer, as well as mixing microphones from different sources. And so we did this all on one laptop, we joined that together and sent it to a YouTube live stream. At the end of the normal talk, there was a discussion which we ran using Skype or Zoom. Uh, we had wireless microphones and we had an audio mixer and it's rather easy to set that up. In the case where the internet speed is low at one of the hubs, it's necessary to uh, stay in YouTube and use written comments and have the speaker reply acoustically to the comments. At the end of each 30 minute session, uh, some music came on, it was running automatically on the internet software. Um, so people at different hubs simply had to connect to the internet to hear this music which reminded people to stop talking and move to another room. So everything stayed exactly on time. Um, I could put this into the context of the history of communication technology, which makes it seem like just one more step in the development. Um, perhaps you know that back in 1876 the telephone was invented, which completely changed the way people communicated with each other. And then, uh, skipping forward um, a century, people started flying to international conferences uh, and it became accepted towards the end of the 20th century that all academics should be able to fly to international conferences. Surprisingly enough, it was only 1987 when PowerPoint was invented, but it took about a decade or two for the academics to catch on and give their talks in PowerPoint. Um, then there was a series of technological developments which completely changed the way we communicate with other people and even the way we regard ourselves as members of the society. The in invention of digital mobile phones with SMS, the introduction of Skype, Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. So um, these developments led to the idea in 2009 that a semi-virtual conference could be held where people were working at two different locations and communicating with each other in real time. Um, unfortunately, that uh, conference by the World Resources Forum was not, to my knowledge, repeated. And perhaps the reason was that the technology was too expensive or difficult. That was changed in 2013 with the uh, invention or introduction of YouTube live streams, which we used for our conference in 2018. I wanted to make this video to show that the multi-hub conference format is a practicable reality and was successfully delivered at a large international meeting. The technology exists, it meets key environmental and inclusivity goals, and it commands a good deal of support from the people who attend it. Richard Pankat and his team have done the groundwork, learned from their mistakes, and now want to share what they have learned with conference organisers everywhere. Get in touch with them to learn more and help make this format commonplace around the world instead of the rarity it currently is.